Let's talk about long-term side effect of gallbladder removing. What can you do about symptoms that may happen? They could be in two categories. The old one that did not get result due to, uh, the, due to surgery and the new one could appear. Let's talk about the symptoms. Heartburn, diarrhea, fatty food intolerance, gassiness, nausea, vomiting, and brain fog, abdominal pain, and stone and sludge formation, again, in the liver, even in the absence of the gallbladder. So you're looking here, gallbladder with the stones get removed, and the new stones get formed actually within liver itself. So let's talk what you're going to do about that. On the left is the symptom. On the right is the uh, possible solution. Number one, acid reflux. I have a numerous videos on this topic. And uh, uh, start with this one, eight common causes of acid reflux. Part one, two, and three is the three videos. So that's problem in, in the stomach. The rest of the problems in the small intestine are systemic. So if person has diarrhea, so number two, diarrhea, what do you do? You eat very small portions and eat often. Also, to overcome diarrhea, experiment with overcooked white rice. It will bind you. See if that's helpful. Fatty food intolerance, what you can do, you can eat a light effect fat or so good, good fat, such as omega-3, small pieces of fish, uh, three or four pieces of nuts or seeds, uh, a little bit seeds. You can have uh, a little bit olive oil with lemon juice. Lemon juice will help to deal with uh, the uh, olive oil fat. And eat it, stew, eat small portions and stew it and stew it really well. Gas. Number four, experiment with, with uh, digestive enzymes, small intestine or pancreatic enzymes. Abdominal pain could be for two reasons. Reason number one, bile by itself and chemicals can irritate the digestive tract. Irritation, inflammation can, uh, can create a pain. And also if person is gassy, gas extends the digestive tract and that creates the pain. And if gas and if pain, excuse me, did not disappear after taking the digestive and, and pancreatic enzymes, then for the abdominal pain, you can experiment with L-glutamine. Number six and seven, I want to bunch into one uh, category, nausea, nausea, vomiting, and brain fog. People often complain that they cannot concentrate. I have a cut and balls in my, in my head. It's all systemic complaints because liver does detox. And... Um, Often chemicals become more toxic after detox. They get absorbed back into the bloodstream and have an effect on the brain. So people uh, feel nausea and brain fog. What do you do for that? Do so-called liver detox. I have uh, YouTube videos on liver detox. And learn about clean diet. means that as little chemicals in your life as possible, herbicides, pesticides, coloring agents, um, uh, you know, uh, Drugs, over-the-counter over medications. Number eight, stones sludge formation within the liver. What that means that underlying problem of stone formation have not been addressed. What do you do to address there? You change your diet. You start to eat at least half a green apple every single day. You incorporate bitter herbs such as um, arugula, escarole. First start to cook one, then you can uh, eat them in form of salad. You experiment with black radish, um, red radish and daikon are excellent. And then if you still feel like maybe something is not quite right yet, experiment with bile salts to uh, improve the ratio of bile salts in the body. The, here is my uh, uh, contact information. If you need me as a health coach, let me know. I am done with this uh, video. The rest of the video, explanation. What actually happened? in our body and why you need to take certain supplements. I want people to understand. And for that, guys, let's go to the blackboard. I already pre-draw my favorite picture of the digestive tract. This is mouse with the teeth. This is esophagus, loisophageal sphincter, stomach, pylorus, small intestine, <clears throat> uh, large intestine, and we go to the bathroom. We go to the bathroom right here. It's it's rectum. And liver is located here. All right, liver. Gallbladder is located here. And out of the gallbladder, we have a duct 
that drains here into the small intestine. And here is the pancreatic gland. I will write P for the pancreatic gland. Under normal circumstances, liver is producing bile all day long, day and night, 24 times 7 times 365. And all this bile from the liver goes into the storage in the gallbladder and it stays there until there is a demand. What is the demand? You put the food into your mouth and the fatty of food, a lot of, if, if the food is very fatty, then um, that's the signal. Contra uh, gallbladder starts to contract, liver starts to produce more bile and all of that out of gallbladder comes here into the small intestine. Gallbladder is gone. What happens? All bile that get produced through the day goes straight into the small intestine. Bile by itself is chemical substance. Uh, it has bile salts. And when they are in the small intestine, they actually irritating the small intestine. Irritation means inflammation. Inflammation means undigested food. It means gas. So what you do, as I said in the previous, um, on the slide, you treat that symptomatically. So if you have a symptoms as diarrhea, right? Because when there is inflammation here and there is an irritation due to chemicals, bile is a chemical, right? So what, what uh, digestive tri tries to do, it creates a diarrhea, try to get rid of that fast. And uh, it goes faster through the digestive tract. Nutrients did not get absorbed. It comes out as a watery diarrhea. So what you do, you do a white rice. If person has due to irritation, inflammation, or poorly digested food here in the small intestine has a gas, what you do, you try to irritate the symptoms with pancreatic enzymes or dig small intestine digestive enzymes. So I will write here this, let's say pancreatic, pancreatic enzymes. And they are, are protease, uh, lipase, or let's write amylase, amylase, and uh, number three, lipase. Because there is an inflammation right here in the digestive tract, so the protein and the carbohydrates get poorly di digested. They start to um, uh, ferment and create the gas. So what you do, you add the pancreatic enzymes. So pancreatic enzymes, you take through the mouth and the hope is that it will actually decrease the gas and bloating here. And the less gas and bloating, possibly that person will have less abdominal pain. Uh, now, as I said, uh, in the, in the, under normal circumstances, uh, the gallbladder contracts and the bile get released here. But uh, now it drains almost all the time uh, bile from the liver into the small intestine. You can do one of two things. Uh, you can do, in order to neutralize this bile, that is irritates the small intestine, you can eat frequent small meals that actually have fat. Because we remember, the purpose of the bile is to emulsify the fat. So as bile drains here all the time, all the time, all day long, what you do, you eat small portions four or five times per day and you eat good fat to provide the substance for the bile to deal with. So you eat small piece of fish or you eat several uh, nuts and a little bit seeds. They are good fat. You can have a salad with uh, olive oil and lemon juice. Lemon juice will help to deal with olive oil to make sure. So you can have a half an avocado for, uh, for a quarter of avocado for the little snack. So to make sure that fat is coming here into the mouth and actually bile get kind of neutralized and then it comes out as a stool out of here and hopefully decrease inflammation. But you can do the other second thing. What you do, you can try to train your um, liver to ex produce bile on time. So for that, what you do, you eat three square meals three times per day at the same time. Basically, you train your liver as a Pavlov's dog to um, kind of trying to elicit the bile, not 24 times seven, but at least at some, like maybe three times per day more produced here than usual. So make sure that this bile does not irritate the small intestine. Now, I want to say not only bile will irritate the uh, small intestine. Also, here, listen this carefully. Liver has a 
second major function in our body. It's a detox organ. Okay. So everything that we put in our mouth, everything that we breathe in, everything that uh, we put on our skin, eventually in the, all chemicals end up in the bloodstream. So suppose the person is taking ibuprofen, right? You take ibuprofen, this ibuprofen get absorbed, absorbed into the bloodstream. This is the bloodstream. And here is your ibuprofen. Uh, 30 minutes later, you, you feel fantastic because finally it starts to work and pain decrease, right? Ibuprofen. But a, ibuprofen is not forever. It's only for five or six hours because ibuprofen with the bloodstream will go to the liver and this ibuprofen get chopped in a small particles. Uh, it's called liver detox and it has two, fa two phases. And what happened often Drugs and chemicals, when they get detoxed, they're broken into smaller particles. Those particles are much more chemically aggressive than a substance by itself. And by the way, liver does not break only uh, chemicals. Uh, a lot of other stuff come from, from inside, like uh, parts of the uh, cells in our body, hormones, estrogen, progesterone, so all of that. So and all, it's all supposed end up normally under normal swimming, and the chemicals supposed end up here in the gallbladder and stay here, and only get released when the fatty food comes in. It get released into the small intestine and combined with the food, and hopefully a lot of that is not going to absorb but get out with the food into the stool. But when there is no gallbladder. So all of these chemicals that we ate and get broken down, so or partially broken down, they immediately end up back into small intestine, which could be empty at that time, right? You did not eat uh, your food yet. It's empty and it's get immediately get absorbed back into the bloodstream. And because it's a chemical and it's more toxic now, it goes again into the liver and liver is like, what the heck? I just deal with this ibuprofen and something even more toxic comes back, okay? So all of these chemical substances are floating in the bloodstream. And what happened? They are floating and they go into our brain. And the symptoms the person will have, foggy brain, cannot concentrate, nausea, and sometimes even vomiting. So um, the last one uh, point, when the person starts to form stones, when in, in the absence of, of the gallbladder. So that means that underlying problem never been addressed. Stones get formed because bile salts, there are several of them, they're supposed to be in the ratio and the ratio have to be right. If the ratio is violated, one of the bile salts is in a high concentration. What happens is get excreted and becomes, it's too, it's a little bit too much. So as a result, it's, it forms a sand and around that sand, um, substances of the bile, such as fat and cholesterol, get around that soul and they form a sand or stones. So the idea is you need to change your diet. What I want to do, I want you, you to go, I want to go back to the PowerPoint presentation. I want to go here. So uh, stones and sludge gets from, so change your diet. Diet changing the diet is paramountly important. So half and half of the apple change this ratio of uh, bile salt. Half of the ap green apple per day, um, bitter herbs, radishes, and bile salts. Make sure that you have a, a right ratio of all bile salts, so they do not become points of precipitation. Now I want to say uh, one last uh, word about detox and low uh, toxin um, uh, to toxin life. So you are looking at the picture slide that I stole someplace. You can see that here is the list of toxins, right? There are endotoxins. They are metabolic end products and bacteria and the toxins. So what are the metabolic end products? It's um, uh, uh, parts of our cells. It's part of our own chemicals, for example, Hormones such as estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, T3, T4, epinephrine, they all, they none of those circulate in our blood forever. Eventually they get broken down and they get into the liver and liver get excreted, liver excretes them. Also, 
like red blood cells. They have a lifespan, 120 days. After that, him from the red blood cells goes into the liver and get excreted. And that's what gives the um, our stool brown, brownish uh, color, right? That's the part of the red blood cells excreted. So we cannot affect this uh, toxic load on our liver. But what we can do, we can affect is um, exotoxins. They are drugs, like prescription, over-the-counter, recreation, recreational alcohol, pathogens, agricultural chemicals, insecticides, pesticides, fungicides, food additives, all this red and green and blue, uh, like blue toxins, indoor and outdoor uh, pollutants, that one that we uh, spray in the in the house, like pshh, those sprays, the one that people um, put in their car when the car get uh, washed and they pshh, those uh, artificial smells. So all of this adds to um, overall toxic load. And um, so if you want to uh, deal with um, nausea, vomiting, and brain fog, so you need to decrease toxic load. So that's what you do. You cut down on chemicals in your life. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Like, subscribe, bye-bye for now. Oh my goodness, this video again, such a long video. Sorry.